In this example, we are going to apply the node voltage method to a circuit containing a voltage controlled current source. In this given circuit, we have one ideal independent voltage source and this circuit component is the dependent source. If we look at the symbol, the symbol has an arrow inside. So this means that this component is a dependent current source. And also the magnitude has this voltage variable V delta. So this means that this dependent source is actually a, a voltage controlled current source. Let's apply node voltage method to solve this circuit. We need to identify essential nodes. So this circuit has one, two, and three essential nodes. So recall that an essential node is where three or more circuit elements meet. So in this case, this bottom conductor has four circuit elements joining. So it is an essential node. We need to make one of these essential nodes a reference node. And in this case, we can ground the bottom essential node to indicate that this is the reference node. <clears throat> Next, we need to apply Kirchhoff current law to the remaining nodes. So let's label the node voltages. Normally, we would label this node as V1 and this as V2. But if we look at this circuit, this voltage V delta this is the voltage drop across the 1000 ohm resistor and it's actually equal to the node voltage here. Hence, we can just label the voltage here V delta and then at the other node, we can use any symbol. Let's use V1. <clears throat> Assume all branch currents are flowing away from the node. So we have one, two, three branch currents here, and then one, two, and three branch currents here. <clears throat> Let's now write the KCL equation at the first node. So this branch current is the current through the 500 ohm resistor, and we can use Ohm's law to write an expression. So we follow the direction of this branch current, and then this branch current is voltage at this side minus voltage at this side which is 50 volts divided by the resistance. So this gives V delta minus 50 over 500. This branch current through the 1000 ohm resistor is V delta minus 0 over 1000. And then this branch current through the 2000 ohm resistor is V delta minus V1 over 2000 is equal to zero. Let's look at the other node. <clears throat> so this branch current is now V1 minus V delta over 2000. This branch current through the 200 ohm resistor is V1 minus 0 over 200. And this last branch current, because we have the current source connected in this branch, the current here must be equal to the dependent current source magnitude. And since our assumed direction is opposite to the direction of the current source, we get minus V delta over 750 is equal to 0. The last step is to write the dependent source constraint equation. And in this case, because the, the variable V delta is actually equal to one of the node voltages. So hence, in this case, we do not need to write a dependent source constraint equation. If we look at these equations, we have two variables and two unknowns. So we can easily solve them. We can use the solve command in Mathematica to easily solve these equations and using the solve command, the solution can be obtained as shown here. 
So the obtained solution is that V delta is equal to 30 volts and V1 is equal to 10 volts. Now we need to solve for the circuit variables and in this case we need to solve for the power associated with the dependent source. So let us associate an arbitrary polarity plus minus like this. So the power associated with the dependent source is given by the voltage drop across the source multiplied by the current. Here we can see that with this polarity the voltage drop across this dependent source is actually node voltage V1. So what we get is V1 and then the current is actually the magnitude of the source which is V delta over 750. And we need to use the passive sign convention to decide the sign of the power calculation we can see that this current is entering the terminal marked minus. Hence, we must use the power calculation with a negative sign. Then substituting values, we get minus 0.4 watts. So this negative answer means that this dependent source is supplying or generating power in this circuit. We can use either P-SPICE or LT-SPICE to confirm our answer. In this case, I'm using LT-SPICE. The voltage controlled current source is available as part name G and it is straightforward to configure. So we can run the simulation and look at the solution. So if I hover the cursor over the dependent source, in the bottom left corner, LTSPICE says that the power dissipation is minus 400 milliwatts, which is equal to minus 0.4 watts that we calculated. And the node voltages are 30 volts and 10 volts. So this confirms the solution.